Aw, it's great to have an audience waiting for me. I appreciate the two of you being here. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. I am the host of On Top and Hot. And not that it really matters, but this is July 14th. Now, the reason I say it doesn't matter is this is going to be a green video. What I mean by that is it doesn't have an expiration date. Most of the videos I make have information that sooner or later is going to go stale and become irrelevant. This is a video that will not become irrelevant. It'll be just as good a year from now, so I can still get views out of it. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you how I find the heat in a stock. As a day trader, we need to be on the ball. Day traders, we're trying to catch things before they run. You need to find the heat before the flames ignite. Ain't nothing worse than seeing a big pile of ash from a roaring fire that you missed. So I'm always talking about looking for heat in the charts or a hot catalyst going cold on a cold chart. What am I referring to? Well, there's three things that I like to look at for heat. Something that's going to make a stock move. One, information. Everybody does this. They look through the news presses. They look for the filings. You've also got Twitter. You've got Google for articles. There's lots of textual information out there. Another source of heat comes from your charts. That's how I do most of my research right now. I'm looking for charts that have heat, that have volume build up, a breakout setup, uh, a bounce off of a strong SMA. Also, I am looking for crowd factor. I used to do most of my research based around this when we had volume in the market and it made sense. Now without the volume, it's really tough. The crowd factor. How many people are talking about this company? How many people are paying attention to it? How many people are trading it? Not just the volume, how many people are actually trading it? This information to me is critical. So I have what I call a wheelhouse of pages. You should too. You should know where you're gonna find those types of information over and over and over again because in the morning, before the market, you're on a time limit. You wanna find things quick. So have these pages ready so you're not looking for the information on Google. So I'm going to show you how I find heat. I'm going to share my wheelhouse with you and show you how I go about this. I'll try to keep it brief because this could go on and on and on, but I do want to give you enough information to make this worth your while. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start here at the otcmarkets.com website. Now I do use other sites, but boy, oh boy, this is an excellent site for OTC stocks. Now, penny stocks are any stock on any market that are under five bucks. And not every stock on the OTC is a penny stock. Oh, heck no. We got stocks on the OTC market over $10,000. Yes, we do. <laughs> we got Heineken down here, Budweiser, L'Oreal. We got lots of big companies down here, and I guarantee you they're not under five bucks. Now, the otcmarkets.com is an actual business listed on the OTC markets. I think it's OTCM. I can't remember. They can be invested in if you like them, and that's their business right there, housing all of this information. They have a liability invested here. When we talk about those green ticks, they're the verified transfer agent, the verified profile, it's this company that's doing the validating behind the scenes. So they do a lot of work and they bring us a lot of information. And that's where I get my news and my filings for the OTC market. This column right here, all of this is information and you can go over any of this that you want, but we only need to focus for this one column right here for the most part. Now, as you can see, it just flops down here, hit anywhere in the center and it'll just get in your face. <laughs> anywhere on the sides, it is dead. So. Come on in here and come on down to news. Now this has got a lot of information. We've got three gates on this page. Company news, financial reports, and SEC filings. Now these gates have expanders on them. Just click that more button and it'll just keep going and going. And this comes out in real time. Now the OTC markets does have a 15 minute delay. So maybe there's a delay. It seems like the news comes out pretty bloody quick, but the newest will be up at the top. You can see the date, you can see the ticker, you can see the headline of news. And if you wanna read it, you just click it. Just that easy, you jump on in there and get what you need. Jump back out and you get the news. But every time you leave this page, you gotta hit that more button again. So if you're on a computer, 
you may want to hit the uh, open in a new link, a new page, so that you don't lose this. Because if you go way down, it's a pain to keep coming back here and hitting that more button over and over again. Now, obviously, the other way you're going to get your news is to come over here. You're going to go to Google sometimes, but you don't know what you're looking for. How do you do a search if you don't know what you're looking for? Well, what is it you might want to look for? You could put in company. You want a company first, so you just don't get any general information. And let's say maybe merger, right? Company merger. Well, you're not going to want to search general information. That's not going to help you. Come over here to news, click news. Now when you get into news, click tools. You don't want to read news from two years ago, right? So click news, sort by relevance. No, we will determine what's important. Sort by date, put the stuff at the very top. And these are going to be any company. These aren't just penny stocks. So you've got to search through them yourself. Completes reverse merger. Um, you know, you're just going to read the headlines here, whatever you see. And it is in chronological order. We're only three hours back, five hours back. Now I've just saved myself a lot of time. I can go right through here right now, page after page, and see if anything's going on. JetBlue announces prepayment to Spirit stockholders and merger progress. I posted information about this one, and this keeps me in touch. You can do the same thing up here with maybe the word um, special dividend. You don't want to just put in dividend because everybody's giving dividends. You're going to have too much news. It just doesn't help you. Special dividends. This could be a stock, a cash dividend. Ooh, we like those, right? So you can do that. Pharma stock announces a dividend of 47 pound. Now there's not a lot of those. Oh, Alt Alliance exploring district special dividend payable in Bitcoin by investing.com. There's an interesting one. That was three days ago, folks. Today is July 14th. Uh, the, who was it? FEMA just passed a rule that stock companies can now issue dividends using digital forms, cryptocurrencies, tokens, whatever they come up with. So this is a whole new ballgame for giving shareholder value without having to dilute the stock and stuff like that. And any word like that, um, maybe uh, split, you know, if you're looking for forward split. You could put that in there. Whatever keyword you think, make sure you put company in there. You could try throwing OTC in there, but that doesn't normally work. You would think it would, but it doesn't. So hopefully that'll save you time over here at Google. So between this website and Google, I've got the news whooped. I can quickly and easily keep up with what's going on throughout the day without wasting any time. And as day traders, that's what we need quick due diligence so that we can get that information in a hurry. However, the problem just looking at the news is you're only getting half the picture. You've got to look at the other side of the coin, SEC filings. There is lots of information in SEC filings. So if we're only reading press releases, we're probably missing out on a lot of good information. But more importantly, we're missing out on some hot trading opportunities, some hot catalysts. Because the fact of the matter is there are a lot of companies on the OTC that do not put out news presses in conjunction with their filings. So we could easily be missing hot catalysts. So once you've caught up with your news, you're sitting right here, don't leave this page. Flip the coin. Check the other side. Roll on down here to SEC filings. All of these come out just like the news. Real time, chronological order with the most recent up here at the top. Now, these are coming out all through the day, but most of them come out before the bell, before 9.30 in the morning. I know this because I'm over here at 7.20 every single trading day, and I'm in and out, in and out of this, looking at their 8Ks. That's all I'm focused in on, folks, are their 8Ks for two reasons. 8Ks are material change. You get important information in 8Ks, mergers, acquisitions, reverse and forward splits, management being fired or hired, lawsuits, shareholder meetings. I mean, all this sort of news. But what I really appreciate about an 8K is their size. They're very small. I don't have to go through a lot of information to find out what's going on. Let me give you a few examples here. As I said, most 8Ks are really, really short. You can get in, see what's going on, get out and be in that next 8K in a hurry. I can normally do about two to three 8Ks a minute. Not because I'm special, but because these 8Ks are so short. 
This is a great example of what most 8Ks look like. There's the top and there's the bottom. That is the entire thing right there. And the only thing we have to be concerned with is what's underneath this big, bold black line. Now, above it, you do have one piece of information you may want to consider, the date. Make sure you're not looking at an antiquated filing. Accidents do happen. So you open this up first thing in the morning. You're in a hurry. You want to get this information as fast as you can. Scroll on down to this bold black line. It's right up underneath it. Find that first bold sentence. That'll give you the topic of what this filing is about. This one says other events. Not very clear. I don't have a clue what that means. So I'm going to have to do some more reading. Well, luckily, they give you the information immediately. You don't have to go browsing through a lot of information. FOMO and its subsidiary, Smart Solutions Technologies, were served with a business lawsuit by a former salaried employee seeking $600,000 in commission. Not very good news. And I'll bet you it's probably not even in a news press either. So this would be a real good heads up. Another example of an 8K, making sure that date is current. Scrolling down underneath the bold line and checking out the first bold sentence. Submission of matters to a vote of security holders. This one's a little longer, but not much. I was able to scope it through and see nothing here of interest. So I was out of here and on to the next 8K. But let me give you a heads up here. You could open up an 8K that's talking about a shareholder meeting. Looks like boring news, so you're out of there. Hold on. Go see if they give you a list of proposals they're going to vote on. Here recently, I've been finding a lot of reverse splits. We're finding these before they vote on them, before they approve them, before they enact them. Good time to find that information. Another example here for you, coming down underneath that black line, entry into material definitive agreement. Ooh, that's a hot catalyst. And this is a longer 8K. We got a lot more pages here, but it's not super big, but you don't have to read it all. Normally, the first and second paragraph will give you most of all the information you need. And they tell us here that the company has entered into an agreement and a plan of merger dated June 1st, 2023 with Seaport Global Acquisitions. This is American Battery Materials, if you're interested. And the last example I want to give you isn't about the information down here, though this gives you another one, change of control, big catalyst. What I wanted to point out was up here. The date. This is a current filing. It came out July 14th on Friday. So why does that say March 9th? Read what it says before it. Date of earliest event reported. Ah, so this is a follow-up filing. You've got a dot to dot here. So now, if you want more information, you know how far back to go looking for. It. So don't let that confuse you if it says that in front of it. So that's what 8Ks are all about, folks. You can get a lot of information from them in a big hurry. Now, I've got one other place I like to go to get hot information. And I get all that hot extra information from FINRA directly. I'm over here at FINRA right now looking at a page dedicated to the OTC filings. And contrary to what you'd think, all of these filings are not on the OTC market. And there are a lot of gold nuggets here. Now, I really like this page. I've added it to my wheelhouse of research and due diligence for OTC stocks. Now, to be honest, I don't have a wheelhouse of sites to do research on the major exchange. Why? Because everybody talks about the major exchange. Yahoo, MSN, Wall Street, Bloomberg. Does Wall Street or Bloomberg talk about OTC? No. Do they have pages just for us? No. So when I find somebody giving us respect and love, I'm hugging up to that. So this is in my wheelhouse now. So when you get to this page, the first thing you're going to notice is that today's filings are already sitting there waiting for you to read. They are in chronological order with the most current at the top. Not only do you get the date, but you also get the time. Now, if you want to look at more filings, they've got a start date and an end date here. Open up that calendar. Choose when you want to start. Choose when you want to end. If you just want to look at one day, say the 10th, Monday last week, put the 10th on both calendars and you'll only get the filings for that day. This is a great tool. Now, when I come over here, I am looking for specific information. They've got the ticker here. They got the name of the company, but it's the event type and the effective date columns I'm looking at. Now, they've got a lot of different events here. 
And I don't know what all of them mean because I'm particularly looking for certain ones, the ones we keep talking about. Mergers, acquisitions, splits, special dividends, and they list those here. Now, I'm not looking for cash dividend, regular. You know what those are, just regular dividends. I'm looking for something different. So I'll start scrolling down here, looking for anything that catches my attention, like this one right here, reverse split. Now, what's most interesting here is that they will file information before and after reverse splits. So you really don't know which it is until you look further. Well, that's where this effective date comes in. They tell us this reverse split is happening on the 17th. That's just a few days from now. It has not happened yet. Great heads up. Now, if you want more information, scroll over to that document icon, click that, and a pop-up comes up. Now, you can get bits of information here and there, but if you scroll down to the bottom, you get everything. You've got the date they filed this filing, what the filing is about, a reverse split, when it is going into effect, July 17th, and how big is it? One in 1,000. Huge split. What I don't know is what's the price of this stock? I don't have that information here. I don't know if that's a penny stock. So I will copy this as part of my due diligence. I will put this in my mouse and I will run back over to the OTC markets and I will check, see if this is a penny stock. <laughs> yeah, it's a penny stock. It's a sub, sub, sub penny stock. This is a very interesting one. This has got five zeros before the one. And believe it or not, it's on the market. I checked the charts, it's live. Now I have never, ever, ever seen a stock less than triple zero one on the market. Now this is why it's such a big deal. At this price, if you were to invest $100, you would get 100 million shares. When and if this reached double zero one, your $100 bill would be worth $100,000. If it actually reached a penny, your $100 would be worth a million dollars. Outstanding buy if she actually moved. Now, the other thing I'd be looking at, they're talking about a one in 1,000 reverse split. So I'd come over here and see what the share structure is. Well, it appears that we've got a very large float, 6.8 million, and outstanding shares is 7 million. They say they're doing a one in 1,000, so take off three digits, one, two, three. So what's that leave us? 6.8 million. Wow! We're gonna go from 6.8 billion down to 6.8 million. And if you could actually buy it now and people get excited and this starts to run, you could be rich and never need to trade another day in your life. I'm only saying. Jumping back to that daily list, I continue scrolling down here looking for anything that's catching my eye. Uh, let's see, anything new here? Nothing, oh, look here. Forward split, Northeast Indiana Bancor. That's, and that is on the 17th as well. So we could get some free shares. Let's see what's going on here. This is a forward split of two to one. Two to one, so we're gonna double up your shares. But again, I don't know if that's a penny stock. So I'm gonna grab that, run over here, drop that into my search, and see what we get. <clears throat> Not a penny stock. And after this split, the stock is gonna be at $20.50. So this is what I do back and forth, back and forth, looking for things, name change. Come down here, you can go to the next page and see what's going on. Here's another reverse split. That one's already occurred on the 14th, name change. Here's another forward split. Oh, it's got an F. You see that F on the end? That tells me it is on the OTC and it's a foreign company. This has not happened yet. That is happening on the 17th. Let's see, what is it? It is a 10 to one for every one share you have, they're gonna give you 10 free shares. So let's see if uh, this company is a penny stock. Ooh, we could have found something here, folks. See what I mean about gold nuggets? Yes, it is a penny stock. She is at 32 cents right now. Her share structure, she has got, uh, what? and you're doing a forward split, they've got 2.8 billion outstanding. If they do a one in 10 forward split, you have to add shares by 10 times. They're gonna have 28 billion shares and they are going to bring the price down by 10. 
So it's going to be 3.2 cents. What's the point of that? I don't understand. In either case, folks, this is how you keep up with what's going to happen. As day traders, we want to be ahead of the waves. That's the only way you surf. You got to be ahead of it. But if you don't know where the waves are going to be, you ain't going to catch nothing. This is a wave catcher right here. So I've shown you through news and through filings how to find heat. Now let's go find heat looking at the charts. Now, if you know me at all, you know how I do my due diligence. I look for hot penny stocks by looking at the charts first. I'm looking for a chart that has heat. When I find one, then I go through the information looking for a catalyst. Something to get the chart going or keep it moving. And when I do all of this work, I'm doing it on Think or Swim. This is my free trading platform I got when I signed up with TD Ameritrade. And that was free too. Now, of course, you can do this sort of thing on any trading platform, but if you're following me, it makes it easier if you have TOS. Now, I've made a lot of changes to how I do my searches. You can do what I'm doing, but it's very bulky and slow. I've streamlined all this so I can see a lot of charts in a little amount of time with a little amount of effort. As a matter of fact, I've made you a video so you can set up yours too. Just go on over to my YouTube channel, browse around a little bit, Take a look at a video or two, see if you see anything you like. When you're all done, go on up to the search bar and put in TOS for Thinkorswim. TOS only brings up one video and it'll show you how I've got all mine set up. It'll show you not only how to set up your charting and your SMAs and oscillators, but buttons to your quick charts, turning a scan into a watch list, everything you're about to see this video talks about. So that'll help you just like it's helped me. So the first thing we've got to do here is pull up a penny stock scan so we have charts to look at. I only use two filters, the last price and the volume. I use the price 001 to $3. You can use anything from 0001 to $5. And I do go outside of my area, but that's where I start my efforts. Volume is the second filter I use, and I have it really low. Now, there's three reasons I do this. If I don't put anything in there, I get a lot of zeros. That's just a waste of my time. Second reason is I look at pre-market a lot and I want to see stocks as soon as they start moving in the morning. I don't want to have a big old number in here and miss those. The third reason, I look at warrants. Warrants are little stocks attached to bigger stocks on the major exchange and it doesn't take very much volume to get them to move faster and farther than the stock is. You can get some huge gains off of those. I don't want to exclude them. So I bring up a scan and I put it in an order of percentage change, highest at the top. Then I scroll down and I start somewhere at around 30%. Now you can start up here. There's only about 50 or 60 charts there and you're gonna look through them in about two minutes, three minutes at the most, at the most. So if you wanna start up there, the reason I don't, well, you know, if it's already had 196% gains today, what are the chances it's gonna to run tomorrow? Right, I'm, I just, you know, there's no need. So I start at 30%. So what I do, now I wanna remember this ticker because things are gonna change here in a second. We're at 49%, I'll be able to find it. What I have this set up to do originally was to just click these little twos here. This is a button I've added. And I got that same yellow two up here. So they are connected and I can quickly look at charts. Now I look at charts when I'm looking for heat on the four hour, six month view. I wanna see a big picture. I wanna see where they're pointed, what their overall direction is. If you're looking too close, it's kind of like following a car. Maybe it just turned the corner and it's going that way. Well, is it going that way really? Back out and you can see it's been traveling like this and it just has to drive around obstacles. So no, the bigger picture is good for projection. So that's where I start. I will look at smaller time frames for consideration, but searching, just browsing, I'm looking at the four hour. And all I gotta do is click these little itty bitty tiny twos with my even smaller arrow. You hear me complaining, right? Yeah, this isn't easy. The problem is, is when I start getting down here, I gotta draw my eyes from here, back up to here, then back down to there and back up to here. That's a lot of work if you're looking at 100 or 200 charts. It is, really. So I changed everything around. First thing I did was I turned this scan into a watch list, which is really cool. I got a watch list now that is live. I can open this up every single morning, and all I got to do is click these. 
But where's my chart? Well, now it's over here. Huge. And it's all hooked up. All I have to do is click. But it's even easier than that. See, I better look with my mouse still and put it on there and still click it, right? Well, now I can take my hands away from the mouse, put my eyes on the chart, and I can put my finger on the arrow. And I can move just like this. And folks, I'm telling you, that's super easy for me because now I never have to take my eyes off of the chart. Refocus, bouncing back and forth. That starts to make your eyes really tired, but it's easy to just glance at the same area for a while. What's really nice, and you're gonna laugh at me here, I can do this while I'm watching a movie. I'm being serious. This is like taking notice of a pretty woman walking by. No matter how busy you are, you'll take notice of that because it doesn't take any you know, in-depth concentration. This doesn't either. We're not reading. We're not having to digest information. So I can actually be watching a movie and have my eyes come down here and just glance back and forth. You know, and then I, I look over here and I say, whoa, she's hot. Look at this baby. She's got everything going for her. And I'm being serious. This is a very hot chart. This is where I would find heat. What am I looking for? Well, this has everything. It's not the perfect setup for me, but it's got everything. One. She's got a low bubble that she's bouncing off of. Ever since that low bubble, she's been climbing, going through every SMA on top of the biggest SMA, the 200. See the bars getting bigger. She is on top of her nine. Most importantly, we've got a tsunami of volume. Folks, volume is key here. You can't surf without a wave. I don't care how pretty your board is. You can't surf without a wave. So the volume is heavy. Then we look at the oscillators. I've got four. There's lots of oscillators you use. You can use anything you want. I use the PPO and the MACD. These two are akin to each other. You read them the same way. You want that blue line on top of the pink pushing up. The difference, the MACD uses the full price basically and the percentage price oscillator, that's right, uses a percentage of the price. I prefer the PPO, but I do like the MACD. Also have our standard RSI. Can't live without that. But just so you know, the RSI is nothing else but the price line. If you turned all of these bars into a line, it would look like that. That is the price line, which is why the RSI goes down when the price goes down and the RSI goes up when the price goes up because they are the same. So those are my three oscillators. My last one is my ADX. A lot of people don't use this one. Think of it as trend continuation. It's all based on straight lines, not whether it's going up or down or sideways, just is it still going the same direction? And if it is, it says your trend is still going the same direction, whatever it is. And I like to find a line going straight when there's an uptrend. As soon as that ADX changes, even a little bit, I know my uptrend has changed. And if it's not going up, that ain't good. And that's when I can get out. That is a good signal for me. So those are my four oscillators. These are all looking very good right now. Now the thing is, this is a warrant. It is a warrant, nothing wrong with that. Matter of fact, she's got a ton of volume, so who cares what it is? You can trade a warrant like a stock, get in it, get out of it, whenever you want, take your money. There's a lot of extra volume here. Warrants don't normally get more than 100,000 shares. I mean, it happens, but that's a heck of a lot for a warrant. And the last volume bar here is 62,000. And you can see how many volume bars there are. So this would be a good look at. Normally the warrant runs when the stock itself, the company gets news. So you look at the company, Tidewater Inc. Just see what their news is. See what's going on. If the price of the stock is going up, normally the warrant goes up. If this is a SPAC, that means that the shares themselves at $10 won't be bid up because they're only worth $10 till they close a deal. So when hot news comes out about a deal they're thinking about, it's the warrant that moves. And they can move anywhere from 100 to 1,000 to 10,000% in one day. And they are penny stocks. They start off at a penny, two cents, three cents, and go as high as they can go. So we have got this list over here. And this is just you know, not scripted. I have no idea what we're going to look at. However, I did take the time to pull out some examples because there are certain chart settings I look for. 
And that's all you need to do, folks. I am not an expert. You do not need to be an expert. Just get used to looking for the same three or four setups over and over again. The ones you know are going to break out, like the atypical breakout. We're going to see one of those, and I'll show you. They break out seven out of ten times, and they're easy to recognize. You can watch a movie and see it. So, I just come over here, and I start using my arrow. And I am just glancing at this, looking for anything that looks hot. Volume is primary. I'm looking for a breakout or a serious bounce. Let's see if we can find something to talk about. So, you're just taking your time. And you can go through these charts very quickly. Don't go too quick. You want to look at the oscillators because there may be a recovery that is real strong. You may see a divergence, which means that the MACD is going down while the price is going up or vice versa. That normally means there's going to be a change in trend. Anything else? There's a nice one. Now, it hasn't traded much. This is a six-month, four-hour chart, but she's had some big jumps here from one cent all the way up to, oh my God, 29 cent. Whoa! 2,900% gains. How about this one? She went from seven cents up to 34 cents. You're looking at almost 500% gains. So she could have a low float. She's been climbing all this time off of her low of triple zero two up to 41 cents right now. Volume isn't all that great, but come on, she looks good. It's worth looking at, right? RSCI. I'm not telling you to go look, but that's what you do. You'd grab the ticker and you'd run over to the OTC market, throw it on in there, or whatever your favorite page is, and see what's going on. Check out the news, check out the filing, see if you see a catalyst. Is it going to continue? Osculators don't look too bad. They all look warm. PPO could warm up, but I mean, come on. That's a nice chart. So we come back over here and just keep on rolling. Now, this is the pre-set up to an atypical breakout chart. What is that? Well, that is when you have your 200-day SMA, sometimes a 50-day, coming down like a ski slope. And then it comes down into the parking lot and levels off. And hopefully we'll see one here that we can take advantage of and I can show you exactly what happens. There's a nice breakout, right? She's gotten over top of the 50. She's bounced off it a couple of times. Now, a lot of people would get scared by this, this big, long spike. But after I see her get up over top of a strong SMA, she starts to float for a while. I think this is more like a foundation, a pillar, something to hold the whole structure up so it doesn't come all crumbling down. That's what I think that is when it breaks through real quick and then comes back up. I normally don't get scared by those. Same thing the other way around. I'm sure we'll see one of those. But this is climbing. She is bouncing off of a 20. She's left the 50, volume is starting to come in, oscillators are all pushing up. If all your oscillators are pushing up, that's a signal. So that one's looking good, and HYF, I'd go check it out. Let's see what else we can find here. This one is an atypical breakout chart, preliminary, getting ready to set up. Let's see if we can find one. Now, I do have some set aside, as I said, so if we don't find one, I can still show you what one looks like. Uh, well, this one's got a bowl going on. You see she was coming down, got flat, and is now rolling up. This one you may want to take a look at. We've had a crossover. Everything's starting to get strong. She just had a bounce from 70, 17 cents to 70 cents. That's like 400% run right there. So I'm looking for heat in lots of different ways, but volume plays a big part. All right, here's something that I can point out to you. She's been coming down here. She's hit this low bubble. She is bouncing around. She's broke all of her SMAs and she's gotten to her 50. Lots of excitement, right? You can see we got big bars now. These was little baby teeth and all of a sudden here come these fangs and she's up on top of her 50. Now look at our PPO and look at our ADX. You see right here how it looks like an hourglass, like it's almost a mirror image. They got real close and then they started to get wider and open up. Look at the chart. When they were getting real close, the price was falling. When they get to their closest point, it goes flat. And when they start to spread, the price is going up. Strong, right? This is a pattern I use on my oscillators. I put my PPO on the top and my ADX underneath so that I can look for that pattern right there. Now, it will climb on other patterns, but that's an easy pattern to see. And if this blue line starts to come down 
if this red line changes in any direction, I know it stopped climbing. So if you're looking for an exit point, just watching either one of those lines as she's climbing. If either one change, you know it's time to probably get out if you're worried. Obviously, you can always go down to the lower time charts to be looking. But I'm just telling you, this is the big chart and this is letting us know where her long projection is. Now, I keep talking about volume and volume is very important. And I'm going to show you two pages where you can get more out of volume than just the average and what's happened today. There's one that's setting up. Ooh, this is a real good one to show you folks. We have an atypical breakout, 200 day SMA coming down. You can recognize this one all the time, even watching the movie. Now look what we got here. We have lots of these strong directional breakouts, but they're not breaking out. They're just telling you what she wants to do. I want to climb. How do I know that? She gets through the 200, which she can't jump up on top of yet. It's too steep. She will start to fall if she gets up there. She will slide downhill and come right back here. That's embarrassing. It's better to show your intention. So she breaks the ice, goes way up here waving her flag, comes back home. She didn't come way down here and lose any strength. She just came right back home. Then she did it again, still too steep. Did it again. Boy, this one is really eager. I, normally I only look for one, one of these intentional directional spikes. Once this gets flat enough, she is telling me I am running. Once that gate is open, I am out of here. I'm only looking for an opportunity. So once that 200 day SMA is flat enough, I'm expecting this to take off. Now, right now there is no volume building up, but everything is climbing and setting up. That is a perfect setup to me. That is a preliminary setup. She has not broke out yet. She is right up underneath it, not showing any volume. When the volume comes in, it may be late. But again, this is a warrant. You normally don't get a lot of volume. What you get on warrants are popcorn volume. All right, let me show you the examples I've got since we're under a time constraint. This is a breakout here. We hit a low. She was underneath the 200. This is something you look for. Banging your head underneath the 200 or the 50 over and over again. And then finally coming around and look, we have our 50 day SMA crossing the 200. That is a power signal. That's called a golden cross. It's one of the strongest signals on the charts. People can actually search for these with scans and they will play those charts not knowing anything about the stock because they know the chart is hot. It is fire. The catalyst is only fuel for the fire. A fire will burn for a while without fuel. That's why I look for charts with heat. Uh, the oscillators are all pushing up here and the volume has been popcornish, you know, off and on, but we've had some strong bursts here. Everything is looking strong. So I would consider that one. Let's take a look at another one here. On a downtrend, 200 day SMA hitting a low here. She broke it. See how flat it got. She took off here. She got up over top of it and now she's bouncing on the top. Not underneath. Yeah, she's broke underneath. But think of that as a rubber ball going underwater and coming back up. It's just fe feeling it out. And now she's starting to jump and look at our SMAs. Follow your SMAs. They're all starting to come up over top of the 200 where they belong. And there's the 50 getting ready to cross the 200. That is going to be a power sign. Volume is pretty bloody strong through here. And our oscillators are all pushing up. Another example for you. We're going down to number five solid breakout here folks this is scary to some people but when i see this running for two months two months 60 days of climbing yeah she has a little dip here and there but look she's only bouncing on her 20 isn't getting anywhere near now if you're looking at your five minute you're not going to see this strength you're going to miss all this strength on the five minute charts on the four hour charts you can see this is a climber and she's grabbing momentum right now she started off down here at $0.03, cents and right now she's at $0.24. Cents. Over this period, it's 800% gain. Look at the volume getting stronger and stronger, and there's our 200-day SMA coming into the picture. That means she's moving enough shares to create enough data, and all of our oscillators are pushing up. So we see all the signals here. Definitely worth consideration. Let's take a look at one more. Uh, this is a typical breakout, the atypical breakout chart, and it's perfect. You can see your intentional directional spikes here breaking through. 
way too steep to jump on. She's going to slip downhill and fall back down and bust her head. And that's when you end up down here. When you try to break out too early, you normally end up coming down too low. That is a huge spike. My goodness. She was all the way down here at 78 cents and went to $1.86. Woohoo! <laughs> so she has shown her eagerness over and over. And right now, the 200 day SMA is starting to plane out. She has shown her intention. She is starting to push. The volume isn't super incredible, but all of her oscillators are on the upside now. This one looks very good for a breakout. You see how easy those atypical breakouts are to recognize. You can also go around looking for bounces on the top. If it's bounced on the top a couple times and it's starting to climb above its bounce level, looks like a breakout to me. Those are all good to look at. Now, I told you I had two other pages that give me more information about volume that can help you. So let me show you what those are. The first page is real easy to get to, Yahoo Finance. Go ahead and throw your favorite ticker up there. I'm going to throw in CTXR. Been a lot of attention around this stock. Uh, they've got a FDA decision coming out July 28th. They got a phase three trial top line results last year. They have applied for their biological license to sell this medication and the final decision for the lympho Hodgkin's disease drug anti-cancer is July 28th. The final answer. So I'm checking this one out. So CTXR, we're looking at her average volume. They tell us her average volume is almost 2 million a day for the last 30 days. And on Friday, she did just a little over a half a million, just under 600,000. There, you can see that figure there. So what I do now to get more information from the volume is click historical data. This is going to bring you every single day that this has been on the market. You can see the open, the close, the high, the low, and the volume. Now you get to see every day's volume, not an average. Now, right there is, uh, let me get this a little bit smaller. That right there is roughly 30 days that you're looking at. They said the average is roughly 2 million a day. Well, we got a half a million, half a million, 1.7, 1.6. It looks like lots of days are under 2 million. I see a couple are over 2 million, so why is the average so high? Ah, right there, see that? One big day. On June 23rd, she did almost 16 million shares. I don't know what happened that day. Did her price jump? No, not really, no. Price didn't go anywhere. A lot of accumulation on that day. So that tells you more about what's happening. Is the volume getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Is it getting less and less? Is it sporadic? Let's take a look at another popular stock here. Mullen, M-U-L-N. I know she did billions of shares the other week. So her average is 189 million shares. Really? I would have thought those two days of billions of shares would have lifted it up. Her volume today, pretty high, 387 million shares. That's like double her average. Now let's go look at her historical data. I'll make this bigger for you. All right, so we've probably got about three weeks right there. So here you go. She was at 18 cents three weeks ago, 16 cents right now. Hit a high of about 28 cents in the middle. Her average volume, well, she was doing 400, 400, 500, 300,000. Here you go. There is 1.8 billion, 1.3 billion. Yeah, this wasn't thousands. This was millions. 413 million, 583 million, which is a lot of shares. But these two days, she did 1.8 and 1.3 billion. Looking at the days before, no interest. It just was average. Now, what we notice here is that she is now in the hundreds of millions after breaking the billion mark. Look at right here, June 13th. She was at 100 million. Scrolling down this line, do you see any more 100 millions or 200 millions? Uh-uh. So there was a change right at June 13th. Her volume picked up to over 100 million. And right now she's holding about 400 million average. And she has hit over well, almost 2 billion shares. So there's one way to get a little more information and insight into the volume.
The other one is even better. This is abnormal volume. We're always talking about average volume. Well, you know, when we see volume, I'm always doing this calculations. That's 10 times as much as before. That's four times as much. Well, they got a page that does that for you. It's over here at allpennystocknews.com. Nope, my bad, allpennystocks.com. This is their abnormal volume scan tool right on their page. Now, this is real easy to use. It's not set up great, but it's real easy to use. I click this top one here, stocks with the highest deviation from their 90-day average. Two, okay, we can keep two, but put in a real big number here. I mean it. Put in 1,000. No, 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 no. Put in 5,000. You're saying, John, no stock goes 5,000 times over. Yes, they do, and you want to see them. Uh, price filter, uh, well, nope, I'm going to set this for 001, my favorite scan, and $3. That's my scan. That's what I want to see. And enter minimum volume. Uh, yeah, 20000 for for this is good. Now, they've got this bulk list here. you got to scroll all the way down. I know, it's horrible. Find your search bar here. Now, it's all set up. You can choose how many you want to look at at one time. We're going to look at 32. We're not really going to look at 32, but I want to give you an idea of what's going on here. Now, I'll enlarge these so you can see what's happening. They give you the information. Oh, look at Mullen here. This is Mullen. I am on the one month. You've got a mini chart here. You can click three months. You can click a year. Is the information below change? No, it doesn't. But this is showing you Friday. Look what happened here. Today's volume is 5,550 times greater than our 90-day average. Whoa, that's kind of, I don't know if that's accurate. Anos here, they're at $1.05. They had a 43% increase. Volume was 12 million. That's 1.4 thousand times her average volume. Frequency on the NASDAQ. They do have penny stocks on the OTC here. Don't think they don't. That's what all this is about. I do believe this says all up at the top. Yeah, see, we've chosen all exchanges, so we will get stocks from every single market down here. Uh, let's see if we got in. There's Alibaba. What? Alibaba health information. She did 48 times her normal volume today. So your biggest is at the top. Your smallest is at the bottom. And you can see here. I put all exchanges, so we're getting Canadian securities as well. New York Stock Exchange. But this is a way to catch up with stocks in real time. Come over here anytime during the day, and it'll tell you the stocks that are doing abnormal volume. And you can see the chart. Check out, look at this one. Look at that jump on the abnormal volume. So this would be one you'd go look at. Maybe not. Maybe it's gone too far. Another one here. Look at that huge jump. Abnormal volume normally is good, but abnormal volume can be sell-off as well. Not all volume is good. All right, so that's how you find heat in the charts. You're looking for setups. You're looking for volume. You're looking for price action. Now let's take a look at crowd factor. Now, in my personal opinion, the crowd factor is a serious component to figuring out how much heat a stock has. What we're really asking here is how many people are interested in the stock? Well, there's some subjective ways to look and some objective ways to look. Subjective, the forums. What is the chatter? What is the buzz? What stocks are people talking about the most? What are they posting about? That is one good way to do it. Over at Twitter, there is a lot of activity over at Twitter. They even have a trending section on the side. Now we're going to take a look at two other pages, but first we're going to look at the OTC markets for that objective information. These are hard facts. They've got a page here I cannot find anywhere for major exchange stocks. How many trades has a company done through the day? That's completely different than volume. You might see a huge spike in volume and think, whoa, this thing's taken off. But there was only two people that made large buys. And there isn't anything else happening. You get into that and you're stuck because there isn't a crowd trading that stock. I want to see how many trades. You come over here to market activity, click current market. This will bring you to a page showing you the most active stocks across the entire OTC market, all 12,421 stocks. And it boils it all down for you. 
Now they show us the best and the worst. We've got our advancers in the center and our losers at the bottom. Of course, we want the advancers, the winners. Now you can sort these out if you want to. You can look at stocks just over a dollar, just over a nickel, or you can look at every stock they got. That's what we're gonna do. So click all, then expand your page by clicking more and voila, they give you the whole page. They dedicate it just to our gainers. Now they set this up with the biggest gains at the top. This is the biggest gainer of all 12,410 stocks right there, but we don't care because this is a double black diamond. Double black diamonds are on the expert market and you and I can't trade them. The trades you see, these are coming from guys on the other side of the curtain, brokers, marketers, and we really don't care much about them. We can trade anything else though, like this one at eight cents, it did 26,000% gains with only 6,200 shares and only two trades. Now that could be two people, or it could be one guy that bought twice. But in either case, it's not a crowd. What we're looking for are high double digits. Honestly, I would like to see triple digits. Now that sounds like a big deal. It didn't used to be. Back when we had a lot of volume and a lot of fluidity on the markets, I could come here anytime during the day and see lots of stocks that had hundreds, even thousands of trades in a day. It's not like that anymore. Now I'm happy to find high double digits and get excited when I see triple digits. So we've got one here with 23 trades, but look at that price, 405. Not interested, don't wanna know anything else. Now I'm gonna kick this more button out all the way down to say 30%, somewhere around there. There we go, 30%. Come back up here and we are gonna just focus on this column right here, our trades. I'm looking for high double digits, hopefully triple digits. There's that 23, a 10, a, oh, there's an 86. What's the price? A triple zero three. I really am not interested in the triple zero stocks because they don't move fast enough. You do get bounces. There's 100%. She moved from triple zero one five to triple zero three. It's not a very big move and it was a ton of shares and we had 86 trades could be 86 people oh here we go we've got a triple digit not real big but it's a triple digit 132 trades they did a little over a quarter million shares with 87 percent gains she's roughly at 37 cents kspn on the middle tier Let's take a look at this because this is what I would do. I would jump in and take a look. But I opened this up in a new tab because I didn't want to lose my spot here. So we jump over here to check out KSPN. She is on the middle tier. She's getting her financials audited. She has got that transfer agent verified and verified profile. This is validated information behind the scenes. We have independent directors. This means they have intentions of uplisting. That's good too. And they're penny stock exempt. This is great. This means that they've been in business for three to five years, have had millions of dollars of assets during that time, and they've kept up with their financials. They've proven themselves responsible. They're not teenagers anymore. They're adults, so they're not penny stocks. Even though this is on the OTC market and at 36 cents, it is not a penny stock, but I still like to trade it. <laughs> so what else can we learn over here? Well, why is she moving? What's her catalyst? Let's see what sort of news we got. We got news from uh, June 20th, 2023. Doesn't look hot. I don't see anything here. So we jump over to disclosures, see if there's anything there. We've got an 8K from June 30th. So you would jump in and check that out now that you know how to read 8Ks. Then I'd come back to my list and I'd pick up where I left off. 13, 17, 29, not impressed by any of these. 51, eh, price, triple zero three, no. Volume has been very, very low. What was the volume today on the OTC market? On uh, July 16th, she was actually the 14th, three billion shares, three billion. Folks, do you realize that 18 months ago, we were doing like a 700, no, yes, 700 billion shares a day. Now we're only doing three billion. We are in a coma. We were also doing a lot more trades back then and a lot more dollars. So it is a slow market in case you didn't know. 
So let's see, we got a 142 right here. I like that number. That is Gaxi. I am a holder of Gaxi and I'm down on it. And why not? Look at that price, triple zero four. 33% gains. That means it was at triple zero three and went to triple zero four. Whoop de doo! <laughs> 29 89. This one's not bad. It's at a decent price. Double zero six five did five and a half million shares. NHYF. Now we aren't going to jump into this one because we have a time constraint. But you get my drift here, and we are now under 30%. And that's as far as I go. Now, another place I like to go, one forum. It is called Investor Hub. Maybe you heard of it. They've got one area I really like to focus in on because they've got a lot of different pages for every single stock. But if you come here to hot, they've got a list of hot boards, like the breakout board one. This tells you which boards have had more activity than any other boards, just like we saw at the OTC. Shows you the ticker in the company here and how much more increased activity it's had today. Well, that's a very good sign. A lot more people coming in. And you've got more information here if you want to see it. You've got one for the most read. You can see which companies people are looking information up on. What are they thinking is interested? Most posted. People are posting information. So you can look at this from a lot of different angles. Now, my third page <laughs> is very unique. I like to use it. I doubt anybody else uses it, and I'm not saying you have to. It's a little biased. It is my own personal Twitter account. Now, no, this isn't about ego. It is literally about the views. You know, I cover a lot of stocks over here at Twitter and Discord. I post a lot of information every day. I am posting all the pre-market runners I can find for penny stocks, as many as I can find. I am putting out uh, post-market runners sometimes, mergers, acquisitions, SPAC deals for other warrants. I am putting out a lot of information, literally uh, 300 stocks a month maybe so what i like to do since we're familiar with these stocks i know which ones they are just come down here and look at my views and if i see anything with a large number that's extra attention that tells me that there's a lot of people interested and you can see what my average here roughly is 139 262 141 boom 3900 little more than my average so what stock is it well, this one is METX, Medin Holdings Group. On July 14th, Friday, I put out news. Uh, they said they announced a purchase of 200 units of new Bitcoin mining machines, and it ran. Now, Bitcoin's on the rise right now. I think most of the crypto market is going to start to rise. I'm not saying every coin. I'm talking about the industry. I think it's at its bottom and it's coming up because basically the government has given a stamp of approval to the cryptocurrency industry. How did they do that? Well, believe it or not, now in July, they've already launched one of the crypto dollars in America. The wholesale dollar has already been launched in over 100 banks. This is being used for business. The consumer dollar, which is also a crypto dollar, the Fed coin, is going to be for me and you. That's going to be coming later. We won't be carrying money in our wallets. We won't have any change in our pockets to give to the homeless. Piggy banks will become obsolete. Your change will become collectibles. We are all going digital. And that stamp of approval seems to me to have helped the entire crypto industry. Continuing on with my scroll, the very next one, 2.2 thousands. Mullen. Yeah, she did a couple billion shares the other week, right? Mullen Automotive announces transfer of 350 class one EV vehicles to Tunica, Mississippi plant for final assembly. They had just delivered 22 vehicles to a distributor who is selling them and they got paid for that wholesale cost, but they got paid. So again, we're just looking at my volume here of views. I'm looking for something maybe over 500 because you can see 400 is about my high average. There's one, 592. CTXR, already talked to you about this, the anti-cancer drug for lymphoma Hodgkin's disease. They have a PDUFA date for their biological license on July 28th. 
already finished her phase three. It was successful. This is the final decision. You know, one thing I didn't tell you is they are planning to do a spin out here and it sure sounds imminent. Like they want to get it done in a hurry for the drug that is getting the decision on the 28th. This could be hot. This could run very, very big being an anti-cancer drug coming out of phase three trial with top line results and a spin out. This could be crazy. So this is just one more place that you can get information, especially if you follow me. You're going to be familiar with a lot of these stocks and the information is about stocks people are looking for. I'm only posting stocks that are OTC or penny stocks. So you've got this available to you. You've got Investor Hub and you've got hard facts over at the OTC. How many trades? And you can go there anytime during the day you want. There is a 15 minute delay. Remember that. You can now find heat on the charts, heat in the information, and heat in the crowd factor. And between the three, you have got yourself a fire triangle. Folks, I've given you a lot of information of how I find the heat. I've shown you some of my wheelhouse. If you want to borrow it, borrow it. If you want to create your own, create your own. But do some more DD. Find places you can do your DD. Because remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.